Hey everybody, JJ here again. Welcome back for another episode of Flip Side Up with JJ. Today, I'd like to welcome back my good friend, Bob McIntosh. Bob, welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me back, I appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. I, I know you're running all over the world and all over the country, uh, speaking to people and, and educating folks. So we appreciate the opportunity to have you back. Um, Bob, within networking, there's an which is an important aspect of everything that we do. Some people are comfortable with it, some people are not. I find that my interaction with other new investors, that some people don't really delve into the importance of connecting with others on the internet, say on Facebook and adding fellow investors as a friend. What is the importance of networking for one's business uh, within social media, maybe within Facebook or Instagram, to the success of their business? Networking is a critical component of any business, and especially real estate. You're not gonna be able to effectively do any deals if you're never talking to someone. Like if you're gonna do an e-commerce business, sure, you can sit behind a screen, email people, and never talk to anyone, and you'll be fine. But in the real estate game, it simply doesn't work that way. It just, and if it could, people would be doing that, but it doesn't. So you need to be out there. And a couple of things are gonna be true. For some of you guys, it's gonna be comfort. It's like, hey, I'm not comfortable talking to people. I don't know what to say for you other than get out of your own way. This is gonna be a critical component of your success. Ultimately, you need to be doing it. Um, number two is really gonna be focusing on doing it the right way. What do I mean by that? The right way is not necessarily going around and trying to meet as many people as possible. Uh, in the real estate game, it's about the quality of the connection. And that quality of the connection really comes back to, uh, at the end of the day, how in-depth you get with them in the conversation is part of it but also do they have a way to stay in touch with you after that? And that's where social media comes in. For example, I connect with you and we were just talking before this show about how now you have your contact card and on your contact card, it has your YouTube channel, which is a huge piece, right? That's a huge show. You're investing time and effort and energy to interview people, to bring content to folks. So why would you not want them to connect with you there so that even after they meet you in an event, they can go someplace else and continue to stay in contact with you? Even if they're not texting, messaging, emailing, or calling you, they still feel like they know you. And that's hugely, hugely important. So I, I can't stress that enough. And then the third part really comes back to uh, doing networking the right way. And for a lot of us, because we're uncomfortable with networking, we're, we think about networking, we're like, oh my God, like for some people, it literally, it, it's like, uh, like they're like shivering down their mm -hmm. spine right now. Even just saying the word, they're like, hey, you need to talk to people. And I know some of you are just like, right? What happens if you build your social profiles the right way, you put yourself out there. And I think get for the, a lot of folks, that's going to be uh, hard. But for many, it's going to be easier to do that than it is to actually have an, a one on one conversation. But what ends up happening is when you put yourself out there the right way, people come to you. So networking doesn't have to be this uh, arduous, laborious task where I'm going out and I'm trying to meet people. I'm like, oh my God, I, I gotta meet this person. I gotta go, to, you know what I mean? It's like literally people will come to you. A lot of times when I walk to events now, um, people literally will walk up to me and they wanna meet me. They wanna get a picture with me. They know who I am, which just makes it that much easier for me to create that kind of connection that I want. And what's awesome about that, especially if you're an introverted person, is that when someone comes to you, most introverts are easier, uh, will be more at ease during that conversation because it didn't require them to do something, it came to them. And it's not to say that it's going to be easy. Again, you gotta get out of your comfort zone, but it's easier doing it that way. And so if you create this social profile that allows you to attract folks into who you are, it's just gonna make networking that much easier. And, and Guys, some of our biggest deals, maybe not all of them, but some of them came from that. We have a commercial deal that we're working on right now that came simply because we went to a networking event. I met a commercial real estate broker who knows we do a lot of investing in, in the city of Lockport, New York, which is a little tiny town. Um, and literally, we're, we just got under contract a $2.5 million, 13 business commercial property that will net on average about 19% a year for us and our investors. Wow. Like, just because I met someone at a networking event and talked to them, that will happen. Now, as far as I'm concerned, that's a home run. That made that networking event absolutely worth it. Now, if that deal doesn't come to fruition, which is possible, so what? At least I had the opportunity. And that's really where this game is. It's a numbers game of having more opportunities. Networking gives you more of those opportunities. So networking puts 
networking puts you in the game, basically. 100%. Yeah. It is, I mean, it, really, it, it is the game, more or less. I mean, when we look at, uh, as a real estate investor, you're not really a real estate investor. You are a marketer and a networker. And what I mean by that is you are marketing and networking with sellers, with buyers, with lenders, with contractors, with all these people. That's what you do. If you get good at that, deals will come your direction all the time. And so in the beginning, where it might not be comfortable for someone, where there has some lack of ease, maybe it feels a little bit awkward, just like anything else, the more you do it, the better you're gonna get. So in the beginning, if you're not comfortable with it, it's like, you know, this is really not easy for me. You just do it. You just do it. And the more you do it, the better you're going to get. And, and, and through that, you'll develop your relationships and, you know, things, things will come to you. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and start small too. Like you don't, you don't have to go and say, I'm going to get on stage in front of a thousand people to get out of my way of networking. Like that doesn't, it can literally just be, Hey, I'm going to go to a small networking event with five or six people at a Panera Bread or something like that. And just have conversations and force yourself to. One of the guys that I follow online, his name is Andy Frasilla. He has a thing called 75 hard, which we don't need to get into. It's like a workout program, but for his third phase of it, one of the things that you're required to do every single day is go talk to a stranger complete stranger and someone that you have no idea who they are, you've never met them, you need to go up and talk to them and have, uh, I believe it's either a one or a two minute conversation minimum with that wow. person for 75 straight days. And I challenge you guys, even, even if you're like, what, like that sounds insane to you, what's the worst that's gonna happen? They're gonna walk away and not wanna talk to you, right? And I know it sounds crazy, but it's a great way to get out of your own way and yeah. really drive home that, hey, talking to people is not that bad. And develop those skills. Develop this, through repetition, you get better and better and become more at ease. One of my first videos I ever did, and this is like, I'm gonna relate video back to networking. One of the very first videos that I ever did was terrible. I posted online and I share it because I want people to realize like everything about it was bad. I did like 60 takes. Um, it was just everything about it was terrible. But I put it out there anyways. And then I did more videos, and then I did more videos, and then I did more speaking, and I did more speaking. And as I've gotten, you know, I, I mean, heck, at this point, I'm probably over 3,000 hours on stage. Wow. You know, it's easy for me to sit here and have a conversation and talk about things now because I know what I know, I am who I am, and I don't hide it, I don't try to be anything different, so it rolls out. And if you apply the same idea to networking, the same can be true for you. Just that repetition, practice, you'll get more comfortable. As people network, there are different vehicles and venues to do that. There are, there are local RIA meeting, the real estate investment associations that people have in every area. The bigger the city, probably the more there will be. If one is out of an educational forum, there may be meetups that were, are related to being exclusive to that educational program. Mm -hmm. um, some educational programs, or not the program itself, but it's important for people to get to those particular groups as well as their educational forum. Yes. Um, so absolutely maybe attend something like that weekly. Is that, uh, so here's, here's the thing. Uh, there is such a thing as too many events and there is such a thing as not enough and you have to find and strike the balance for you. And the groups that you want to attend and network at are going to be varied based on a couple of things, right? So one of the things I found as a speaker and going to a large number of events is we call them seminar junkies. Seminar junkies literally go from seminar to seminar. All they ever do is attend seminars and sometimes they're even great at networking because they enjoy that, that community aspect, but they never actually execute. So Bob, in networking, Obviously, it's important to get an education, but in networking, it also helps to not just share that education, but when one explains that or teaches that to somebody else, then it helps them to understand it better. Absolutely. So whether it's their business partner or a fellow student or one of their friends even, it helps for them to communicate what they're learning because as I might have been doing now, as you verbalize your thought pattern to, to someone else, maybe it's something that you've read or watched, ideally you'll get better at understanding that content. Absolutely. Yeah. Teaching it, they always say teaching is the best way to learn something at an in-depth way. So how can you teach things? It doesn't have to be in front of a stage of a thousand people. It doesn't have to be in a room of 10 people. It can literally just be you standing in your house teaching to your dogs, for example. Uh, you know, and that can be a great place to start. But at least you're, like you said, you're verbalizing that communication. You're getting it out. You're letting yourself hear yourself. Your actual voice coming back into your ears again is helping solidify the information. Because instead of just thinking it through my head, it's actually coming out. It's getting 
hitting me both from my thought process and coming back in from the auditory standpoint. So it's gonna help it sink in at a deeper level. And this gets into the modes of learning, which you know, we don't need to go to all that right now, but the more points of communication that someone hears something, sees something, interacts with it, the deeper the level of learning becomes. So again, interacting with people, maybe in the, in the teaching forum. As far as education goes, you know, there are different types of educational formats out there, but it's also important to go to things like the local RIA meetings, which is a real estate investment association, and getting into wider circles of, of knowledge sharing or knowledge, wider circles of networking. What, what, what's your take on all those types of things? So I think it's critical for people to network to as many places as possible within a certain extent. So there, don't become a seminar junkie, which is someone who just literally goes from event to event but never actually implements. That's, that's not good for anybody. It's not going to be good for your business. It's not going to get you to where you want to get to. Um, for whatever reason that you've chosen to do real estate investing, it probably wasn't to just be busy. It's probably for your legacy to make money, but money usually leads to either time or location freedom. Like for me, for example, one of my most important things, I've given up millions of dollars that I could have made, but it would have restricted my time or my location. And I don't, I, I don't care how much money it is, those two things will never compromise. So when we look at different networking events, why we're doing this is, hey, what is that event for? What is the outcome for you for that event? Don't just attend an event because someone said it's a great event, you should attend it. There needs to be an outcome every single time you go someplace. And that could be literally from the smallest little RIA meeting. It could be from a five person meetup at a Panera Bread. It could be from a thousand person you know, boot camp. It could be from a 10,000 person motivational event. I don't care what it is, but you need to attend all of these things, but in moderation and with the outcome in mind. If you're going to an event and you don't know what your outcome is, I would suggest don't go to the event. And more often than not, what I find is that if you're unsure what your outcome is, it's simply because you are already too busy with things and therefore you probably don't need another event to stack more things on to do, right? And so go execute for a while. Go let those things happen. Go interact with your local people, the people that you're talking to here and there. Those folks are gonna be way more important for you executing than going to another event. Now, with that said too, I also think it's important that you don't just stick to the event. If you're in an education program, don't just stick to an event with just those people. Now, I get that it feels safe, it's easier, and you know that they're going through the same thing, that they've invested in themselves, all those things are 100% true. But they can't be your only source of information. Um, as you we were saying on a break that we took earlier, probably only about three or four of the top investors that I personally know are from one education program. Many other arts have done other things and you never know what you can take away from what they're doing that you might never have encountered if you didn't go outside the circles that you're already circling in. So whether it's the beginning entrepreneur, uh, someone who's been doing this for a while, or someone who's at the very top, it's best to diversify your sources of information. Absolutely, absolutely. So for example, one of the questions I got earlier uh, when we were, we were talking was, well, what other things do I need to be learning? So for, uh, one of my clients in my marketing agency is the nation's leading body language expert. Imagine if you could read someone's body language. Now, I kid you not, the first time I ever had a conversation with her, I'm literally sitting, there's a table here, and I had my hands like this and my elbows like this, and I was talking down at the phone, kind of like this, and she literally, just like this, described exactly how I was sitting. We were on the phone, we were on a video call, she couldn't see me, we were in two different states, but she knew exactly how I was sitting, just from the tone of my voice. Now imagine that ability to read someone's body language to know that I can push them a little bit further on the price, or I can't, or I can get that interest rate down a little bit more, or whatever it might be. Imagine that part. So things like that you might not find in, in your specific education program or in one group. You might need to go seek other things out there like that to really increase your skills and a lot of factors. So you know, that's interesting that you talk about body language, because one of the things I touch on is presentation, mm -hmm. and presentation is everything. Not necessarily our, our, our visual, physical presentation, which is hugely important, but in the form of social media, as we're trying to market our business and market our real estate activity, some people sometimes get into other topics, mm -hmm. which are, you know, what, what are the taboos? Religion, politics, global warming, whatever it happens to be. More but, and more, it seems like every day. <laughs> yeah. So, but as, as far as social networking and social media and the internet and just networking in general, is, is it advisable to stay away from those topics when one's marketing their business? So, this is a good question, and it's one of those age-old questions. Like, you know, like if a tree falls down in the woods, is it, does it make a sound? And the answer is, it depends. So, when you're looking at your social networks and you want to talk about certain things. 
here's what you have to do. You're either all in or you're all out. You can't be half. You can't be part way. So if I'm a raging Trump fan, perfect. Be a raging Trump fan, but be all in and realize that you're going to lose some people. You're going to piss some folks off. There's a lot. It's a very touchy subject for a lot of people and that's okay. Now, if you're a Trump hater and you want to talk about Trump negatively, great, but realize that you're going to lose out on some deals, some networks, some friendships, some whatever because of that. Now, from a business standpoint, generally speaking, I tell people to avoid touchy subjects like politics, religion, and a few other topics. But for the most part, if you're going to talk about them, you go all in and, and it's got to be your thing. Like, hey, like I am this person and this is who we are. And just understand that you're going to polarize your audience and that's okay. But those who are with you are going to be way more with you because it's, it's, it's a touchy subject that I am now in agreement with you on. Like if, if you are an anti-Trump person and I'm an anti-Trump person, all of a sudden I feel like we're like this because we both have this thing that we hate, right? Now, if you are a lover of tacos and I'm a lover of tacos, we're going to be like this because of our love of tacos, okay? So can you talk about those things? Absolutely. Just, it's just either all in or don't at all. Yeah, I, I myself... Uh advocate avoiding the controversial topic because everyone's going to have an opinion on a controversial topic. Always. Whether they choose to stand that ground in a public forum or not is a different issue. But basically, it sort of ties back into what you said earlier about being true to yourself. Absolutely. Right? So you want to, you want to touch on that and wrap that up a little bit? or Yeah. So at the end of the day, guys, whatever you choose to do, however you choose to approach politics, religion, or any other touchy subject, as long as you're doing it authentically and you're showing who you are and you're owning who you are with that, at the end of the day, you'll be fine. You might piss off some people, but that comes with the territory. So just be yourself and let that shine, and at the end of the day, you'll be fine. Yeah, I, I really love that message because as I'm new, as I'm trying to find my way, and take the same path and journey that we're all doing, what you're telling me is very reassuring is to stay true to who I am as you should stay true to who you are. And as long as we do that, we're going to be on the right path. Absolutely, we will. Fantastic. Hey, uh, we're going to wrap it up for today. Down the line, weeks, months, as you go through your travels, we'd love to have you back. Love to be back. And uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, and thank you guys for watching JJ's show. I'm sure he appreciates having each and every one of you here, too. On behalf of the team at Beachwood Home Solutions, we'd like to thank you for watching this episode of Flipside Up with JJ. Remember, your network is your net worth. It's not who you know, but who knows you. So when it comes to building your business, the time is now. Stay tuned for more episodes of Flipside Up with JJ.